Hey there, Pirate Monkey Crew, and welcome to another video tutorial. Today we are going to be starting Vision from the Marvel Crisis Protocol Miniatures game. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're really going to be doing very similar processes, right? This is, I really want to get you guys in the headspace of where I'm at when I paint these kind of high tabletop, uh, even gaming type commissions. Again, what we're doing here, we got a Zenithal priming going on. And what we are doing is we're using phthalo green blue shade. And yeah, we're just kind of giving him, it's like a wash slash glaze. The, the really important thing here is that we don't want the paint to puddle up, right? We're not looking for it to pool like a, a really heavy wash would. A little bit of pooling is okay because this paint's pretty transparent. It's not really going to matter. This guy actually is going to have a very similar start to how we painted the Hulk but then the end result is going to be relatively different. That's something that I really like about how I paint these models is that the way that you start can be very similar and the end result can be very different just by doing a couple of little tweaks without having to work very hard at those. And so what we've done here is we have gone ahead and done that second round of Zenithal Priming over what we just did. Now we're coming back with Thalo Green Yellow Shade. And we are really just trying to target and focus those areas that were hit by the Zenithal Priming that we did that second time around. And, uh, again, we're, we're just really trying to leverage those effects of transparent paint to our best advantage here. Uh, and yeah, it's just going to give us a far superior result just because the light is able to pass through the pigment, hit that white, bounce back, and it just kind of, it's like a train. Like, it just builds up energy, uh, and it's, it's really, really hard to stop. Uh, and so the effect ends up looking really, really awesome. And you know, you can tell here that I'm being a little bit more careful. Um, this isn't something that you have to do necessarily. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive uh, and kind of go closer to that wash-ish territory, um, that's just fine as well. You know, I, I would, I would just always recommend don't allow it to pool super intensely. And yeah, you should be good to go. Now we are on to uh, coming back a second time around with that phthalo green yellow shade. And I, I actually am using it a little bit more thickly this time around just for a little bit better coverage. I felt like last time it was a little too thin. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. And it's the exact same process. That's why I've sped it up just a smidge here is I don't want to take too much of your time. And yeah, really just hitting any of those parts that just still feel a little bit too white. Um, we want to kind of and we want to shift that though we want to shift those white areas into being a more intense color So what I'm doing right now is we've mixed a little bit of the hands of yellow with the phthalo green yellow shade and we're starting to work up some highlights now. So again, just kind of really working over those lighter white areas that are really kind of sticking out at us and just working them up a little bit.
You can notice too, I switched to a little bit of a finer brush here. This is my slow fuse. Uh, it's the pure Klinsky Sable. Really, they're really great. I really love it. It's got a kind of a longer hair to it, and it still holds a really, really nice point. And as always, we are using the push-pull method, really trying to push the paint up into where we want it to stay. Even in the darker areas, I do like to get just a little bit of these initial highlights just to kind of make it stand out a touch. Um, usually though, I won't go much further past that just just because it, A, I don't want to waste too much more time in that area, and B, it'll just get too bright. So the next uh, several minutes essentially are just going to be me continuing this process of layering where we are very slowly mixing in yellow and we're just starting to pick out those areas um, incrementally that, that need to be highlighted, right? Remember that stair-stepping effect where you, you place the paint and then you're trying to move inside of that area that you just put down to put down your next highlight. Otherwise, the work that you've done previously is kind of pointless. Um, and so, yeah, and it helps us build up really nice highlights. The paint is still pr relatively transparent here as well. Hands of Yellow is only like a semi-transparent paint, and so uh, it's losing a little bit of transparency, but that's okay. Um, it's still such a vibrant color, and it's being mixed with the Thalo Green Yellow shade that uh, it still just is an incredibly brilliant result.
So something to note here as well, uh, just again, is I'm really trusting in the Zenful Prime. You know, I know it's not the end-all be-all, but when we're trying to paint, you know, high tabletop or even tabletop miniatures, it, it really allows you to work quickly, especially if you understand how to highlight and shade. You can essentially enhance the Zenithal priming. And that's something else that, you know, takes a lot of practice and it can, it can take a little bit of extra work to learn how to do that. And so, I mean, if you're, if you're one of those painters that just wants a really sick army, then you don't really have to learn how to do that. But if you're wanting to push your, your miniature painting a little bit further, it might be something to look into just because it can help enhance that contrast more than anything. Everybody's always after that, that unicorn of contrast. Um, and in terms of value contrast, you can very easily manipulate volumes and uh, essentially how intense the contrast is just by learning how to manipulate the shapes uh, on, in the human form uh, through highlights and shadows, which is a little bit of what I'm doing here. Now we are on to dark lining. So I, I always like to do dark lining essentially because it helps me clarify um, if there's any if there's any kind of lines on the costume, there's any areas that you know need to be separated from the miniature, uh, like those little areas around his neck where the um, they're they're going to be like golden yellow plates. Um, so I need to kind of define those before I move on so that I have a full understanding of, hey, does everything, does all the green look proper um, around those? Because if it doesn't, then I can make corrections. But if it does, hey, great, we've only added to the miniature and we can keep going. This is another technique that can get a little bit of criticism, but in my opinion, it's, uh, you know, it's well worth it. I, I wouldn't use pure black here. I'm using um, a stalo green blue shade with a touch of black just to really kind of sink the value a little bit lower and it works out very very well at essentially defining um, where things begin and end which is an invaluable part uh, of painting a miniature because a lot of times I see people especially beginners working and they have this very kind of mushy painting uh, and it's because it's very hard to see where something begins and where something ends. They just kind of blend into each other into this. I'm trying to find a word here that's not offensive. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be offensive to any of you beginners out there, but it's just kind of a, an amorphous blob. Um, and, and this dark lining helps clarify that and it helps you uh, not fall into that risk of people not being able to read your, your painting. So anyway, guys, that is it. This was a little bit of a, a, a quick one for you. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great month. Um, some of that I, I kind of would like to get back into is streaming maybe like once a week just to connect with you guys. Um, if it's not, if it's not on Twitch, it'll be somewhere. But anyway, that's all I got for now, you guys. Thank you so much for your support during these times. It really has made a massive difference to me and my family. And uh, happy painting. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Bye.